Luther. You see their track. You see there's, there's no marrow in the bone. You see they're scattered all over the valley. They ain't even full skeletons. I mean the bones are scattered all over the valley. They're just bones. But answer me a question, Ezekiel. Can these bones live? Ezekiel answers the only way he knows how to answer. Lord, you know. Critical race theory was born out of critical legal theory. Am I teaching y'all something today? There emerged two common beliefs linking all critical race theories. First, white supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's just a fact. How in the world are you going to fight against that being taught in any school? White supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's a fact. Why don't you want that to be taught in school? You, 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 you let your schools teach us that Columbus discovered America? That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that George Washington couldn't tell a lie? That's a lie. You, you let your schools teach us that some slave owners were beneficent and good slave owners. There were no good slave owners. Anybody who owned people was evil. That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that Abraham Lincoln was good for Negroes. No, Abraham Lincoln was trying to save the Union. And Abe Lincoln himself said if he could save the Union and keep black people in chains, he would do it. That's a lie. Come on, somebody. You let them teach us about a white Jesus. Uh, you let them teach us uh, uh, that Native Americans were the aggressors. Uh, come on, somebody. That, 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 that white folk had a manifest destiny and that the pilgrims uh, were good at Native Americans. That's a lie all day, every day. You let them teach us lies all throughout my history in school. I was taught lies, uh, but you got a problem with critical race because it teaches the truth uh, that white supremacy has subordinated black people and people of color the right to bear arms uh, let me just back up a little bit and let me take you on back to the late 1960s when Ronald Reagan was the governor of California and they were oppressing black folk and uh, a group of, of men and women uh, known as the Black Panther Party mm -hmm, decided that they were going to defend the rights of black folk. And the Black Panthers uh, uh, decided that the Second Amendment wasn't just for white folk. So they strapped themselves with guns and showed up at the Capitol in California and when they saw them Negroes with guns come on somebody that's why I say if you ever really want to get gun laws changed just is strap all these Negroes up to, they'll, they'll change them laws before the week is over when the Black Panthers watch this I want you to they, they, the, 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 the California legislator uh, passed what was called the Mulford Act it was a gun control act that decided who could get guns, who couldn't get guns, what could be in your background, what couldn't be in your background. It was the first time in history that the National Rifle Association, the NRA, supported restrictive gun legislation all because black folk had the nerve to get strapped. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, go get strapped. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Y'all gonna say Bishop told us to get strapped. I said it. Go get strapped. It just got real quiet up in here. But y'all already know I'm a triple P. Amen. Y'all know what a triple P is, right? A pistol packing preacher. Amen, somebody.
All right. You got a responsibility. Good morning. To go back to bar. What's happening, family? Y'all know what it is. Happy Monday. I gotta check something out. But reach your hand back down the ladder and pull somebody else up out of Loader Bar. All right, y'all. Ninety point seven WTCC. Good morning and welcome to the spoken word. I'm your host, Bishop Talbert Swan the second. And as usual, we'll be telling it like it is through cultural idioms and nuances that shape the order, ethos, and chaos of the African-American experience. Words have their own vitality. They shape their own consciousness and create their own context for interpreting social and spiritual reality. The spoken word contains the power to reshape the landscape of society. Four minutes past the hour of 9 a.m., and I want to thank Mr. Kenneth Barnett for bringing us up until the nine o'clock hour with the promise. You can hear the promise every Monday morning from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Bringing you the best in gospel music. Good way to start out your Monday morning. Great way to start out your week. Rainy here in the Pioneer Valley, but I'm not complaining because uh, it could be cold. Uh, so I'll take the little bit of rain that we have. I had a little hiccup here, Facebook. Facebook's always tripping, you know. I shared um, I shared with my groups, and so it said I was guilty of spam. 
and so they restricted and i can't use groups for a couple of days it's crazy it's like you're supposed to be able to share your content with the groups you're in and anyway facebook is always meta facebook they 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 be bugging y'all for real 413-736-2781 rep your city rep your town let me know where you are chiming in from um, what part of the pioneer valley massachusetts connecticut vermont new york wherever you're um, tuning in from um, also via the world wide web um, you know all parts everywhere of course i know i i got houston in the house st petersburg florida is checking in the building uh, greenville south carolina is in the building uh so go on rep your city rep your town let me turn let me get over here to um i see you evangelist stephanie johnson good morning to you uh brother Keyshawn dodge good morning pensacon new jersey is in the building good morning my friend deacon george lovejoy is in the building i see you mother kears good morning good morning good morning sound is on okay sound is on good 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 to hear springfield is in the building uh, let me try to find out who's on the gram um where y'all at graham newark new jersey is on the gram macon georgia is on the gram johannesburg south africa uh is on the gram kansas city kansas is on the gram new york i don't know what part of new york but it, I, hey maybe they repping the whole state of new york uh is on the gram ohio is on the gram maybe it's the whole state of ohio y'all be representing your whole state it's all good though it's all good union new jersey is in the building greensboro uh, north carolina is in the building raleigh north carolina is in the building the atl atlanta georgia is in the building chicago is in the building good morning to every one of you who are chiming in from everywhere go on and put it in the spaces twitter spaces let me know where you're chiming in from put it in the comment section if you're on youtube uh go on and represent keep it real come on now you ain't keeping it real you ain't representing come on now represent your city and your town let me know where you're chiming in from today uh i want to deal with i saw something the other day and and of course there's this continuing theme that has been going on for the last couple of years where they're trying to convince black people that racism is is a, is a thing of the past is a figment of our imagination it's it's not a problem in America or in the world anymore. Um, and yes, structural racism yet exists. And, and, and matter of fact, it is a public health crisis. And we're going to talk about that uh, today. 413-736-2781. 413-736-2781. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Do all of that stuff. Let somebody know the bishop is on the air right now. Uh, we're going to get into our conversation on the other side of the break. 413-736-2781. Westfield, Massachusetts. I see you, Reverend Mark Bayman Jr. New York City. Okay. New York City. Now, I don't know which borough, um, but New York City representing on the gram. West Palm Beach, Florida in the building representing on the gram once again 413-736-2781 boiling springs north carolina boiling springs i don't think i heard of that where's that near um okay 413-736-2781 don't go nowhere we'll be right back don't you dare touch that dial tell a friend tell somebody bishop is on the air right now right now y'all Right now. Life is growing. But the yes of growth is changing. The being in the world will be the end of the road if you refuse to change. 
If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. So stretch yourself. Take yourself to the next level. Come on, come on, come on. Reach a little higher. Reach a little deeper. Okay, y'all. Go a little further. Come on, come on, come on. Don't stop, come on. Reach a little higher. They removed the restriction off my Facebook. It's dumb stuff, man. It just be... I don't even understand it. I shared to my groups <laughs> and they said that violated their policy, which is nuts. All right, let's get into this. After this spoken word piece, we're going back on the air. Let's go. in the mirror and I like what I see. A strong, beautiful black woman staring back at me. One who's seen a lot of pain and had her share of sorrow, but who never gave up hope for a brighter tomorrow. I've been lied to, cheated on, stolen yeah, from and hit, but it just made me stronger and I refuse to quit. That's right. And though I've been tempted, I refuse to stoop to their level. Don't go down I rose above that nonsense and made a liar of the devil. All right, now. 
the devil who said I wasn't good enough, cute enough, or worthy of love. I kicked his butt with divine power from above. Power that says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me and brought me out of darkness so that I could see that I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm a child of the king. Abundant love for me, he came to bring. Oh yes, when I look in the mirror, I love what I see. That strong, beautiful black woman, that woman is me. 90.7 WTCC. Good morning and welcome, 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 welcome to another edition of The Spoken Word. I'm your host, Bishop Talbert Swan the second and um you want to chime in on today's conversation uh 413-736-2781 413-736-2781 if you know the 413 look check us out at the spring of hope church of god in christ we're at 35 alden street the Brick Church right there at Six Corners. All right. You can check it out at 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday. Love to have you as our guest. Had a great time yesterday, both in service. Had a wonderful worship experience uh, yesterday. Um, and then we had uh, the University of Massachusetts. They're doing... Um, surveys regarding issues in the black church um, in terms of the needs public health needs specifically um, in the black church and so we welcome them uh, into our congregation um, to get some information uh, as they're going around the area um, we're one of seven churches that are part of this study um, and then we went to see a private screening of the color purple. Um, so we got it in before the Christmas rush. Um, um, so we had a good time with um, our church family uh, and others from the community who came alongside us um, to sell out the theater um, and watch color purple on yesterday. 413-736-2781, 413-736-2781, rep your city, rep your town, um, let me know where you're chiming in from, all right, always like to know where you guys are coming in from, let me, uh, somebody said good day mate, uh, so I, you know, maybe they're from a England somewhere. Let me see my YouTube. Um, I got to check on my YouTube church. I can see my Facebook church and my Instagram church. Let me got to check on my YouTube congregation. Okay. Okay. Y'all over 100 strong on YouTube today. Y'all doing good. I, hey, Lydia Mathis. What's happening? I see you, Melissa from Raleigh. I see you, Ty Hammer from Boiling Springs. I see you, Fran Francesca Epps from Houston. What's happening, YouTube church? I need to spend a special shout out to my YouTube church. Um, 413-736-2781, 413-736-2781 is the number here. You want to chime in on the conversation? Love to have you. Um, uh, well, I guess somebody's taking me up on it already. All right, here we go. Good morning, caller. Good morning. How are you? I'm fair to Midland. How you doing? I'm just checking in from Granby, Connecticut. Wanted to wish you a happy holidays. All right, happy holidays to you as well. Anything special going on for this holiday? Deciding whether or not to enlist in the Air Force. That's my big decision this holiday. Oh, wow. That's a huge one. Yeah, I got three kids at home and I'm in need of some financial stability. 
All right. Well, I, I pray that you'll make the right decision and that you'll surround yourself with good counsel. Thank you very much. All right. Blessings to you. Bless you too. Thank you. 413-736-2781. Yes, the holidays are among us. Uh, my daughter sent out something to us uh, yesterday saying, I need to know what size hug you need. <laughs> Because that's about all we get. Four one three seven three six two seven eight one is the number here. Um, if you want to chime in on the conversation, so all of this conversation has been going on about um, the gaslighting continues about racism, and it's 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 regardless of what we see right in front of us, they still want to make us think. That what black people see and what we actually experience are figments of our imagination. That uh, we're just misinterpreting um, the pure intentions of uh, our non-melanated brothers and sisters. Um, and we're using the proverbial race card. Y'all know what that is, you know. Um, and that's what they tell you that you use whenever you identify racial discrimination and call it out in order to deflect from it um, to pretend that's not the intent to pretend that it didn't happen it doesn't exist uh, they want to um, cast aspersions on the victims of systemic racism and say that you're playing this this proverbial race card you know and, you know, I've often said to, I've often said to those who, um, uh, I've often said to those who say that is, you know, y'all put the cards in the deck. <laughs> so, I, you know, you can't blame us. You can't blame us. Um can't blame us you know uh when you put the cards in the deck you decided that um a race car was in the deck and you played the card for so long and then you want to tell us that when we identify your racism that we're playing some proverbial race card which, which of course we're not then they want to point to so-called progress that has been made and 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 they want to they want to use it as a gotcha kind of thing you know has progress been made of course when you want to talk about progress in terms of legislation passed and maybe the attitudes of some and those kinds of things um yeah okay um but let's let's keep it a buck let, let, let's keep it a buck um the prevailing attitudes of people have not changed that much and they've tried to tell us that with the younger generation that racism is dying out that is not true um that is not true they 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 have uh they have um taken on the attitudes of their parents and grandparents they, they, they absolutely have and it's amazing how you see young 15 and 16 year olds and and the such acting in such an insidious manner um when it comes to uh, racism and bigotry they get on social media they get they get on TikTok and they get on you know the these various um sites and and act ugly and where do you think they got it from they learned it they learned it at home 
at home. You know, <laughs> I mean, it didn't come by osmosis. It, it, you know, uh, the society they live in, the homes they're reared in, that's where that comes from, ladies and gentlemen. That's where that comes from. And you can't tell me that it no longer exists when we're dealing with it every day and we're experiencing it every single day. Every day. And there's no amount of gaslighting in the world that is going to convince us that it that it that it no longer exists. OK, no amount of gaslighting that's going to convince us that it doesn't exist anymore because it absolutely does. Every single day you see someone getting in trouble, some high profile figure um, for being racist. And then what happens um, is. Is they uh, they always um, you know, say, well, that wasn't me. That's not the real me. I didn't mean that like that. You know, all that kind of stuff always comes into play. Uh, and, and, you know, my question is always, well, if that ain't you, then who was it? You know, from Roseanne to um, Martha Stewart. <laughs> um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on uh, with the folks who engage in racist behavior but that's not even the type of racism i'm talking about because that's what they want you to focus on they want you to focus on individual acts of racism okay but that's not what america's problem is that's not what the problem in the world is the problem in the world is not individual acts of racism, but the problem in the world is systemic racism, structural racism. And this is what they don't want you to think exists. They don't even mind. They don't even mind you saying that individual people acted in a manner that was racist because, you know, that absolves them as an individual okay well, that was that person that's not white people that's not america that's not me and my family that was them that's where they want the focus to stay on individual acts of racism but brothers and sisters the problem that we have is structural racism a pervasive system of power that is based on the social construction of race. It's based on some ideological notion of inherent superiority of white folks and inherent inferiority of black folks and other non-white folks. Okay, um, that's structural racism, and it operates uh, across multiple systemic levels, internally, interpersonally, institutionally, so that it unjustly advantages white folks and unjustly disadvantages black folk just look back over the last couple of years look look back from 2020 to now from the time of the 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 the, the covid-19 pandemic and when you think about covid-19's devastating impact on the world but on the united states just think about how the impact was disproportionately borne by black folks who have the highest death rate 
of all racial ethnic groups. Um, think about the viral videos of private and state sanctioned violence, police officers um, inside the prisons um, with, with correctional officers, sheriff's departments and, and all of that against black bodies that that have been the catalyst to spark these massive public demands for racial justice. Um, and I know people are always going to tell us that, well, you're not the only ones who experience racism. Um, and of course, we got other non-white folks, uh, some of our so-called brown allies who join in on that chorus um, to try to diminish um, the systemic effect of racism on black people. Uh, but here's the reality, brothers and sisters. We have a unique 400-year history, an ongoing perpetuation in this country of a deniable focus of racism on black bodies. You know, um, Dr. Kamara Jones, who was the uh, former APHA president, said that racism saps the strength of our entire society through the waste of human resources. Um, saps the entire strength. Uh, and it is therefore a public health crisis that requires immediate, sustained, and comprehensive action. Immediate, sustained, and comprehensive action. So while the broader society wants to relegate it to individual actions of specific people, specific organizations, specific groups, they don't want to admit that it is structural. It is systemic in nature. And when it's systemic in nature, um, it manifests itself in a totality of ways um, in how our society fosters racial discrimination. There's mutually reinforced inequitable systems that affect us, whether it's in housing, education, employment, earnings, health care, uh, criminal justice. Um, it also helps to reinforce a discriminatory belief system. Value system. A discriminatory distribution of resources. And we can look at that and, you know, it just in terms of the fact that we can't talk about reparations, but we're debating bills in Congress about whether or not to send a hundred billion dollars to Israel and Ukraine. Ain't got no money for the descendants of enslaved Africans. Got no money for that. Can't afford that. That's what they want to tell you. We, we can't. We, the nation cannot afford reparations. Can't afford to even have a discussion about reparations. Um, but they can dole out literally 
hundreds of billions of dollars to nations that are in conflict that we have nothing to do with the conflict to Ukraine, to Israel. I mean, hundreds of billions of dollars. They got money for war, but can't feed the poor. Um, they got money for everything except when it comes to making hope. And you got to understand what reparations is. Reparations come, it comes from the, the root word repair. Repair. In order to repair the damage that was done through years of inequity. That's what reparations is about. Um, to restore people to wholeness based upon the systems that disenfranchise them. Reparations. And so, you know, they want to repair, they repaired Iraq. They pumped billions and billions of dollars into Iraq to rebuild the nation after they destroyed it. They're pumping billions of dollars into Ukraine. They're going to pump billions of dollars into Israel. Yeah. They're definitely going to do it. But somehow when it comes to repairing the damage that was done to the descendants of enslaved Africans, that's a problem. That's the direct effect of structural racism. Direct effect of structural racism. The thing that they don't want us to think exists. Look, even at the Congress. Um, black people in Congress will tell you that when it comes to legislation, they can't pass any legislation that is specific for black people. Now, they can pass legislation for LGBTQ. They can pass legislation um, for Asians and Pacific Islanders. They can pass legislation uh, for migrants. I mean, they can pass legislation for a host of constituents, but we just can't do anything that specifically targets black people because, you know, if we do that, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem because, you know, people aren't going to support legislation that is specific for black people. And you got to ask the question, why? Why not? If structural racism doesn't exist, why not? Because we do know that anti-black structural racism is a reality. That it affects every aspect of our life. 
it affects it, it affects every sphere of life in America and across the world. Um, it's a fundamental cause of racial health inequities, uh, particularly at the institutional structural level. It's a fundamental social determinant of long-standing racial disparities. It has been woven into the fabric of our society so that it reinforces the racial hierarchy from the time um, the first enslaved Africans arrived to the land in 1619 to the time of reconstruction, to Jim Crow, to the civil rights era and beyond, racist beliefs about black people have been codified into law and the policies and the practices of American life. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hey, Bishop. How you doing? This is it is good. I just want to make this quick announcement. All right. How you doing? I'm doing. Did you did you take your boat to get down there this morning? My boat? No, no, no. I just used an umbrella today. <laughs> um, thank you for your show. Everything's always outstanding as usual. After the first of the year, I'll be back giving your state house report whenever you want me to. And then today we got the grand opening of T D Bank. The real grand opening, you know, the bank had decided they were gonna close a few years ago. And I organized the community along with, you know, folks like uh, Jay Griffin, yourself, Commissioner, I mean, uh, Marla Brown and other individuals, Black COVID. And today is the grand opening, 11 until 12. I know it's kind of wet and rainy. We're going inside. It's going to be outdoors. We're going to do it inside. Just the ribbon cutting, basically. The bank has been operating for about one month. They're doing really well up there. But as you know, we've got to get our numbers up to keep that uh, branch open. So. Our folks won't have a bank desert, as they say, uh, within this community. Same location? 12. So. Same location? Huh? Same location? Mason Square, 676 State Street, right across from AIC College. Yeah, I'm, I'm just letting, letting the folks know it's the same location that it was before in the plaza across from AIC. Next to the drugstore, right across from AIC, the corner of Maplewood and State Street. Uh, same location as it was before. As I said, the numbers are doing pretty good for the last month, and we had to get our deposits up to keep that bank open. So we want to thank all those who were really involved, from Mayor Sarno to Congressman Neal to, uh, you know, uh, C. Jackson, and, and, and just the community in general, and yourself included. Yeah, and mo most of the major... Um um institutions financial institutions have left bank of america uh, td had left um they were all gone from this from this area uh and so just like supermarkets and in 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 other institutions um people who uh, didn't necessarily have access to transportation etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, found themselves in a position of not being able um, to take care of their financial needs, uh, as well as grocery shopping and, and other things. So next up, since we got the bank back, is is we need we need a supermarket. Supermarket. That's we're we're on that. The, you know, if the food does it. We know that it is, and we've been really I've been really meeting with different factions behind the scenes, so to speak, to make that happen. But where there's a will, there's a way. And as you said. Uh, a banking desert. All the banks have basically left uh, Mason Square. The uh, bank left in the city, basically. And uh, a lot of folks use that bank. They walk. A lot of foot traffic here. And folks don't want to, you know, pay Uber ten dollars or fifteen dollars to go up the Boston Road, which is the closest TD Bank, or go downtown or go to St. James Avenue. So you're right. Uh, we're going to get our numbers up, and we're, you're on that committee anyhow on the food desert committee. We're going to put that together, and we need to make that happen. So you're right on it, Bishop. So thank you very much, 
enjoy yourself. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you, and Jesus is the reason for the season. <laughs> All right. Watch yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> you you might get in trouble for that. <laughs> All right, sir. All right, take care. 413-736-2781. Let me see who we got here in the space. Good morning. Let's see. I thought we had Lebo in the space. Unmute your microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I was just listening, sir. I wasn't trying to talk right now. <laughs> okay. You had to you had a um you had a request in, so so we put you on. Um, uh, but, but I thought I just I, I thought I just went for listening. Okay, well, glad to have you listening. Four one three seven three six two seven eight one four one three seven three six two seven eight one is the number here. Uh, if you want to chime in on the conversation, I uh, would love to have you. Um, and put your two cents in, your three cents, uh, however many cents that you have uh, in here. Um, talking about the reality of structural racism uh, in America and beyond, um, especially in light of the fact that they're trying to remix history. Uh, they're trying to tell you that slavery was beneficial to black people. Um, I got the window open so y'all can hear the ambulance because it's a little warm in here. Um, um, that, 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 you know, that it, that it was a benefit that, that, that our ancestors learned some marketable skills, even though there was no market to employ them. That is just the craziest notions that are out there. Um, so not only do they want to tell you there's no racism now, they want to pretend that it wasn't really racism then. <laughs> they, they, they want to pretend that enslavement was some altruistic institution crazy huh the great one let's get you in here that that it was some altruistic institution created by white folks to give black people marketable skills they took them over on the middle passage whipped them stole them from their homeland beat them brutalized them raped them murdered them all so that they could teach them how to be a blacksmith wow Good morning. Bro, bro, what you said made me angry, though. Yeah, well, that, I don't know. That's what they're trying can to tell us. Righteous about. anger. Oh yeah, you can have righteous yeah. anger. Yeah, you can have righteous anger. Absolutely. Okay, because that what you all what you said. And I know Ron DeSantis does it, and I hope Florida stands up because what that dude said was so disrespectful to our people. Yeah. That was the most disrespectful thing that you could ever say. We liked it. We like slavery. Apparently, we do. And all people on the planet, we like slavery. That's what that. Well, you know, you know, you notice, you notice, let me come down. You notice, none of their ancestors came over here signing up for slavery. None, none of the, none, none of the Italians and the Irish and the Polish and. You know their their ancestors that migrated from Europe. None of them came over here saying, "Hey, you know, I hear those black people really benefited from that slavery thing. Can we sign up?" They they weren't standing in line trying to trying to get those marketable skills. Four one three seven three six two seven eight one four one three. Seven three six two seven eight one is the number here. Uh, great one. Uh, we lost you. We got you back. Uh, my bad. My bad. My bad. My no bad. Problem. Uh, it's just my anger. I'm gonna be angry with this one because I can't believe Ron DeSantis said that. Hey, he's still a Republican candidate, right? Yeah. Yeah. He sure. He sure he's is. He's still out there. 
it's not like he, he didn't say anything. We heard what he said, right? We definitely heard what he said, and it was crazy. For sure. Appreciate you, brother. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning. Yes, you're on the air. Oh, good morning, um, Bishop. Well, you know, here in America, we're used to always um, changing words. So maybe it, we shouldn't call it racism. Maybe we should just call it um, just a pure act of evil. Yeah, well, the racism definitely was evil. Is evil, was evil. Uh, and, that, and that's why you, I don't know if you listen to the, the countdown to my show. Um, you know, I always say how how they tried to make you think that there were good slave owners, that there were no good. No one who owned people was good. <laughs> they were that they were all evil. Yeah. Uh, if it was them, they, they wouldn't call it good. Absolutely not. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you. 413-736-2781. Tatka in the space. <laughs> Good morning to you. Uh, you got the microphone next. Those of you listening in Pioneer Valley, 413-736-2781. We'll take your calls to show close. Uh, Tatka, you got the microphone. All right. Going once. Going twice. How you doing this morning, Bishop? I'm good. You? I'm pretty good. Um, and hello to everybody listening. I I like when you talk about the structural racism, when that's your topic, because the individual racism is what we get tied up on. Yeah, yeah. We get tied up on, the, oh, the police. Not saying we shouldn't, but we should be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Absolutely. You know, but I know a lot of us can't and we aren't made the same way. We just see the shiny object in front of our face. But there's a there's a, a, a place I want the listeners to go and listen to. I, I mean, read up on this. Um, it's the American Legislative. Um, it's called the acronym is ALEC. You put that in capital letters and you get what most uh, structural uh, racism look like. They, they tell you a lot of these companies, they tell you who the companies are, they tell you how the companies play a part mm -hmm. in, in uh, limiting our ability to have people speak on our behalf like lobbyists and things like that. They'll show you how they keep us out the game of the long-term racism and keep us uh, um, preoccupied with the one cop that you know that ha had already killed somebody, but there are laws being written locally, and I don't know why we won't get into our local politics. And I, I, I Bishop, I'm sorry because I'm trying to get it as fast in as as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. But our local politics, we always want to run and vote for the president, run for the vote for things that don't ha don't even affect us right there and then but your local politicians your 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 city council your 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 school board that is where you have to be enthralled that's where you have to go to every meeting there is that's where you have to do and you have to read things that's going to keep you in the fight to help systemic racism die. It may not die the way we want to see it, but pay attention and get involved in our local politics. That'll help the long game. Because their long game is to own, own air reality in every state in this whole country. Mm. Thank you, Pastor. All right. I mean, thank you, Bishop. Appreciate you. Thank you. 413-736-2781, 413-736-2781. If you're in the Twitter space, go ahead and put your requests in, uh, and we will get you into the conversation um, for sure. Listen, there's a there's a quote by MLK that 
they don't want you to hear. Um, and and he was dealing with structural racism, um, not from the vantage point of individual stuff that people did. And and here's the quote that you you're not going to see on MLK Day uh, or at any other time. And this is this is what he says. And I quote. I'm sorry to have to say that the vast majority of white Americans are racist, plural, are racist, either consciously or unconsciously. That, 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 that's an MLK quote. I, I'm sorry to have to say the vast majority of white Americans are racist. either consciously or unconsciously the vast majority that's what mlk said and but they always want to quote judge me by the content of my character and not the color of my skin and he wasn't even talking about y'all he said he had a dream that one day his four black children That was Siri on my computer. I don't know how Siri got activated. Uh, but he said, <laughs> he said, um, he had a dream that one day his four black children would not be judged by the color of their black skin, but by the content of their character. And all of our non melanated brothers and sisters all of a sudden thought that that quote was about them not being judged by their skin color, but by the content of their character. No, boo-boo. He was talking about y'all judging his children and people who look like them by their black skin. He wasn't talking about y'all. Stop flipping MLK quotes and making it applicable to y'all. That's not how that go. And it's fitting to come up because um, we're it, we're headed towards Christmas, and the first holiday after New Year's is MLK Day, and you're going to see people bastardizing his quotes. You're going to see people who, um, who oppose everything that he was about, plastering MLK quotes all over the place. And pretending that they are the torchbearers of his dream. Um, pretending that they have some love for him and what he stood for. And we know better than that. We know better than that. We know better than that. Um, speaking of which, on January 12th, January 12th, our MLK celebration and flag raising will be at City Hall at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, next week, uh, when I come back, uh, I'm excited about uh, we, we're putting some finishing plans on um, the Lift Every Voice lecture series that starts in February. Some dynamic guests that we're bringing to the city. Just stay tuned. You don't want to miss um, the Lift Every Voice Lecture Series 2024 edition. Um, I mean, we we've all we always bring um, top notch uh, persons to the city. Um, last year, we had our own Springfield native, Vicki Irving, and we had uh, Teslin Figaro and. We had Wes Bellamy um, um, and um, we're bringing some more dynamic guests um, this coming year. I, I, OK, I'll give you one spoiler. And this is for all of the Deltas out there. So, you know, we'll let Johnson and Muriel 
and you know all y'all NAACP deltas <laughs> um we do have uh Siobhan Arline Bradley my sister and friend um who is the president of the um council of negro women in washington dc she will be coming on february 22nd um so i'll give you that one spoiler she will be here and she's their fellow soror so for all y'all deltas out there uh siobhan will be in the city on february 22nd at spring of hope at the lift every voice lecture series uh, uh, so stay tuned for uh us to announce the others that will be part of this year's uh festivity i believe this is uh let's see 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 20 this is the 14th this is the 14th annual I didn't, never thought I'd be doing it this long, but this is the 14th annual, uh, and we even did it during the pandemic virtually, so we, we have never missed a year. Um, it's the 14th annual Lift Every Voice lecture series uh, that will be popping off um, in February of this year, so stay tuned. Uh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. It's going to be dynamic. Um you don't you don't you don't want to miss it all right family i gotta move out your way once again if you're looking for a place to worship check us out at the spring of hope church of god in christ 35 alden street 35 alden street the brick church right there at six corners uh there'll be prayer praise and preaching we're building better tomorrows by changing lives today. We'd love to have you as our guest. Tune in on Friday. I'll be back with the Black Love Experience at 9 o'clock a.m. 9 o'clock a.m. Black Love Experience. Uh, that'll be my last program before. Actually, I'll be on on Christmas Day. I'll be on on Christmas Day. Okay. Huh. I don't know if I'm going to pre record or if I'm just going to come into the studio. But I'll be on on Christmas Day. So I will, I will see you on the holiday. Um, but enjoy uh, your holiday preparations and all that. Be careful out there as you're going shopping. It's a wet one today. Um, don't spend all your money. All right, save some of it. All right, you know, you can celebrate the holiday without going broke. All right, until the next time I talk to you and you talk to me, always remember God loves you, and so do I. Peace and blessings.
grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could. 